Prophecies, the Third Testament, Revelations of Jesus Christ, Chapter 64. The Fulfillment of Old and New Prophecies Thus saith the Lord, That of which the prophet spoke will be fulfilled in this era. My new word will come to philosophers and theologians, and many of them will mock it, while others will be scandalized by it. Yet, when that happens, their astonished eyes will behold the fulfillment of the prophecies that I have now announced. Those prophets of past times received no consecration or authorization whatsoever on earth. They were not obliged to submit themselves to any authority and were satisfied to obey the dictates of their Lord, who put his words on the lips of those he had chosen. Full of faith and courage, nothing could stop them from their mission of teaching my law to the people and separating them from religious fanaticism, making them understand the indolence and errors of the priests. Humanity, thus the pain, misery and chaos that envelops you in these days seem unexpected? If you are surprised, it is because of your lack of attention to my prophecies and because you have not prepared yourselves. All was foreseen and proclaimed, but you lacked faith and now you suffer the consequences as a very bitter cup. Now, once again, I am prophesying through human understanding. Some of these prophecies will come to pass soon and others are for more distant times. This people who hear them have the great responsibility of making them known to mankind, for they contain light that will make men understand the reality in which they live, so that they will halt their speedy race towards the abyss. Much of what I have spoken to you of in this era is a prophecy that refers sometimes to things that are near and others to the future. That is why many men do not wish to assign importance to this divine message. This word, in contrast, shall surge full of light among the humanity of the coming times. In it, they will see and find great revelations whose exactitude and perfection will leave the men of science astounded. The Great Prophecy to the Nations, delivered on January 10th, 1945. I now speak to the nations of the earth. You all have my light. With it you will reflect on the fact that you have come to take lives as though you were their owners. Truly I tell you that your destruction and pain have raised profound repentance in many and awoken millions of beings to the light. They now seek and invoke me, and from them a clamor arises to reach me, asking, Father. Can it be that the war will not end in 1945 and that you will not come to dry our tears and bring us peace? Here is my presence among you, O oh, seven nations, seven heads you have raised in the world before me. England, I enlighten you. My justice will strongly touch on you yet, but I shall give you a strength. I touch your hearts and tell you that your ambitions shall fail and your powers shall be taken from you and given to no one. Germany, in this moment I touch on your arrogance, and I tell you, prepare yourselves, for your seed will not perish. You have asked me for new lands, and men have interjected themselves in my high judgments. I have bowed your pride and tell you to take my strength and trust in me, for I shall save you. Yet if you do not trust in me and give in to your arrogance, you shall fall and be made slaves of the world. That however is not my will, for this is the time in which I am toppling the lords and freeing the slaves and captives. Take my light and arise. Russia, my spirit sees all, the world will not be yours. It is I who shall reign over you all. You shall not succeed in erasing my name, for Christ, who speaks to you, shall reign over all men. Give up your materialism and prepare yourselves for a new life. If you do not, I shall break your pride. I give you my light. 
Italy. No longer are you the Lord, as in times past. Today, humiliation, slavery, and war have destroyed you. Because of your degeneration, you are passing through a great purification. Yet, I tell you, regenerate yourselves. Set aside your fanaticism and idolatry, and recognize me as the Lord of Lords. I shall pour out new inspirations and light to you. Take my balm and forgive one another. France, you have presented me your pain. Your lamentations have reached the height of my throne. I receive you. Yesterday you rose up as a lord. Today you have only the chains you dragged to present me. You have not prayed nor kept vigil. You gave yourselves to material pleasures, and the dragon has made you his prey. Yet I will save you, for the cry of your women and the tears of your children have come to me. You wish to save yourselves, and I cover you with my mantle. Yet, truly, I tell you, pray, keep vigil, and forgive. The United States of America. In this moment, I also receive you. I see your heart, not of stone, nor of metal, but of gold. But I find your mind of metal hardened. I do not find love in you, nor spirituality. I see only grandeur, ambitions, and greed. Continue, and yet I ask, when will my seed put down roots in you? When will you topple your golden calf and your tower of Babel, so that you may build the true temple of the Lord? I touch your conscience from first to last, and I forgive you. I enlighten you so that at the supreme hour, when the test reaches its culmination, your mind will not become confused, but thinking clearly and remembering that I am before you. I give you light, strength, and power. Do not interfere in my high judgments, for if you disobey my mandates or trespass the limits marked, pain, destruction, fire, pestilence, and death will come to you. Japan, I receive you and speak to you. I have entered your sanctuary and seen all. You do not wish to be the hindmost, but I have always wished to be first. And truly, I tell you, that seed is not pleasing to me. It is necessary for you to drain the cup of bitterness, so that your heart may be purified. It is necessary that your language be mixed with other languages, that the world comes closer to you. When the world is cleansed and prepared, it will bring you the seed that I will give. For I see none who are prepared. I do not see in you the spiritual seed of my divinity. Yet I shall prepare the way. Soon there will be a chaos of ideas in the universe, a confusion of sciences and theories. And after that chaos, the light will come to you. I prepare and forgive all of you, and shall make you to enter the true path. When the time is right, and peace comes among nations, do not be reluctant. Do not oppose my will. If the nations have signed, do not betray them, for I will then unleash my justice upon you. Seven nations, seven heads. The Father has received you. Before you, under your dominion, is the world. You will answer to me for it. May the light of the book of seven seals be with each of the nations, so that men may prepare according to my will. Wars and natural catastrophes, signs in the heavens. This same world you inhabit has long been a battlefield and the enormous experience left to men by their ancestors, bitter and painful experience that is like a book opened by the conscience before the men of this time, has not been enough. The heart of humanity is too hard to accept that fruit of experience, left like a legacy of light. All that they have inherited from their ancestors is the hatred, arrogance, resentment, greed, pride, and vengeance transmitted to them by their blood. Understand that it is a time of justice, for truly I tell you that all must be atoned for. 
The earth itself cries out at the poor use made of it, and the elements by man. All that has been destroyed, it shall demand of you, making men realize that they were made by the Creator for the purpose of love, and that the only will that could destroy them is that which protects, cares for, and blesses them. I am leaving you this message that you must carry beyond the seas. My word will cross the old continent and come to the men of Israel who have risen in fratricidal war over a piece of land without realizing the poverty of their spirits. You cannot understand the trial through which the world will pass. All await peace, and that will only come after the elements have given testimony of me. My elements shall be unleashed and desolate the lands. The men of science will discover a new planet, and the rain of stars will illuminate your world. But this will not bring disasters to humanity, but only announce to men the coming of a new era. I have already revealed to you that my people are scattered across the earth, and so the seed of spiritualism is disseminated around the globe. Today, you are disunited and do not even recognize each other due to truly petty issues. Still, when the materialist doctrines come to threaten to invade all of you, then all who think and feel with the spirit shall identify yourselves. When that time comes, I will give you a sign by which you may recognize each other, something that all will be able to see and hear in the same form. And so, when you bear witness to one another, you will marvel and say, It is the Lord who has visited us. Prophecy Concerning the Schism in the Mexican Communities Hear me, people, and rise up to comply truly and worthily with my word. I see sadness in your heart, for you are foreseeing that not all these multitudes will adhere to the law I have written in your consciences. Yet I tell you, as in the first era, the people shall divide. I have spoken much with you, and have marked out only one path for all. I tell you, therefore, that a judgment will come upon this people, when the day marked by the will of your father, as the end of these manifestations comes, if some of my children disobey me. I have come to you as a liberator in this era, showing you the road in the desert, the spiritual journey of the struggle for liberation and salvation, finally announcing you the promised land which is peace, light, and the happiness of the spirit. Blessed are those who rise up, anxious for liberation and spirituality, to follow me in this journey, for they shall never feel alone or weak in the trials brought by the vast desert. Woe to those, in contrast, who lack faith, to those who love the things of the world more than the spiritual, those who remain tied to their idols and their traditions, they, believing they serve me, will be the subjects of Pharaoh, which is the flesh, materialism and idolatry. He who yearns to come to the promised land, the homeland of the spirit, must go through the world, leaving the tracks of goodness. Approach on that road. And do not fear, for if you base your hope in me, it shall be impossible for you to be lost. And if you do fear or lose trust, it is because your faith is not absolute. For I tell you that he who wishes to follow me must be persuaded of my truth. <laughs>